I actually started keeping bees for kind of an unusual reason. My father kept bees and he passed away suddenly on Thanksgiving in 1987. And the family was left with 10 hives of bees and what to do with them. So I said, well, I'll do it. So I learned a lot real, real quick. And so I started loving keeping bees and keeping bees is a big part of what I do now. I do a lot of bee talks to you know, groups and schools and different organizations, garden clubs. The bees live in the, see the two bottom boxes there, the white one and the green one? Mm -hmm. Those, I call those the hive bodies. And there's 10 like frames of honeycombs in each one of them. And that's where they raise their young. That's where they um, uh, store food that they need, pollen, honey. And then like when there's a lot of flowers in bloom and they got a lot of extra honey, then they store it in those upper boxes. Those are called honey supers. And they're, sh they're shallower because when you pick them up, they're really, really heavy. Honey is really heavy. If those bottom boxes were full of honey, they weigh like 90 pounds each. The ones that are coming back and forth now, those are field bees. And they're out flying. They could be flying like right out here to this. They could be going a mile. They could be going more. And they're coming back with nectar, pollen, water, or propolis. The nectar, obviously, is, is extra moisture secretions that the plants have. The pollen is their protein, and the nectar is their carbohydrate, their sugar source. And that's what they need to live. And they arrange it in the hive in such a way, uh, the bee's nest will kind of be like a semicircle like this, and then above it you'll get like a layer of pollen, and then above that you get like a layer of honey. Then all the extra honey goes up top. Nectar is very watery. It can be 60% moisture, it can be 80% moisture. And what they do is they put droplets all over inside the hive, and they evaporate the extra moisture. They need a lot of storage place initially because it's very watery and so they and they store little drops here, little drops here all over the place and it keeps condensing, keep condensing as they get the water out. They also pass it from one bee to another and they add enzymes. They roll it out on their tongue, pass it to another bee and when they do that they add enzymes and doing that in the evaporation process it gradually turns from nectar into honey and when it's no higher than 18.6 percent moisture when they've gotten all the moisture down till it's no more than 18.6%, they cap the cells with a layer of wax, and now that honey will virtually keep forever. When I have two soup is full on, on a hive, mm -hmm. that's usually when I harvest. So in many years, uh, if there's a good flow in the spring, I'll harvest it uh, like right after the 4th of July, and then I'll do it again um, sometime in late August. Every once in a while I do, I do it again in October, but pr pretty much not anymore. I do it twice a year. And if it's a lousy spring flow, then I might only do it once a year and just do the whole thing at once. And every year is different. If it's really dry, a lot of times the nectar dries up. If it's wet and cold, bees can't fly. If it's really windy, the bees can't fly. I could be hot and dry here and my bees aren't making any honey and maybe in South County they have it. It's great because maybe they had extra rain and every year is a little bit different. 1993, I got 1,600 pounds of honey. And it was just phenomenal. It was just a phenomenal year. Uh, honey has antioxidants in it um, and trace amounts of uh, different minerals. So there's more, uh, you know, there's more in it than just eating sugar in that respect. Some people like to say that there's, you know, there's trace amounts of pollen in the honey. And some people say that that cures their allergies. And I have doctors actually that send people to get honey because they say it cures the allergies. Honey is the food that converts to energy quicker than any other food on the planet. I play tennis, so I use it as a fast energy. So before a match, if it's, and I really need energy, I'll just take a whole spoonful. Honeys can be very light in color. They can be very dark in color. So they range anywhere between water white and uh, almost black. Um, and the, the and amber is in between. So you've got all these colors and they all have slightly different flavors. And it all has to do where the bees got the nectar from. And because in Rhode Island they're going a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there, we just call it wildflower. Because I don't have a 10 acre field of clover to say clover honey or a 10 acre of, of anything. And that's what you would need in order to say this is one certain type of honey. Mm -hmm. There are a few exceptions and one of them is the sweet pepper bush which is in bloom now, it blooms in the swamps. It, it, if you go into the swamps now, you'll smell this wonderful fragrant, fragrant smell and this white uh, blooms 
on these bushes. And if the bees really want that and they go after that, you will get a sweet pepper bush flow and I can call it sweet pepper bush honey. It's a very, very light, slightly yellowish honey. And it, you get it end of July, beginning of August. And it's, to me, it's the most wonderful honey. And that's how I advertise it on the back of my shirt. It's very light. I think it's pepper bush. I think it's the best honey in the world. It's in full bloom right now. I started keeping bees before we had all these mite problems. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to worry about any kind of treatments. I didn't have to worry about keeping my bees alive. You just pretty much learn what you're supposed to learn and just do it and everything worked. And then the mites started to get introduced and everybody suffered colony losses. A lot of people went out of beekeeping. And, um, but some of us stayed in it and, and now it seems like everybody wants to be a beekeeper. I've, I was president of Rhode Island Beekeepers Association for about three or four years back in the 90s. And I teach the bee school for the organization and every year my class is full. I've got 80 people in it at the Davies Career and Technical School in Lincoln. And it got so full that we started opening another school in South County. And that one started filling up with about 50 people, so we opened up a third one in the last few years. We meet at somebody's house, and at, at whoever's house it is, um, you know, they might have a garden, and we open up their hives and look and see what's, what's going on there. So you can learn kind of what's happening in different parts of the state. So it's an opportunity to share, to share information and knowledge amongst, uh, amongst the people in the beekeeping world. Before it was a dying art, it was like a, 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 some older man that was looking for something to retire and they'd keep bees. And now there's a lot of young people that want to do it and people want to have a hive in their backyard. Just to, the, the same idea is starting more gardens and growing your own vegetables or having chickens in your yard. Well, even if you're in the urban area, you can have a beehive.